Just in case you were wondering, who is this man with the hairy legs and the pom-pom socks? Well, that would be me. <laughs> Hello. Now, just in case you have not stumbled across my channel yet, my van life channel, I am Jack, and I'm the one with the hairy legs, and I'm the one that's called in the morning, in the evening, in my van. But let's backtrack for just a bit. I've been doing van life, and I'm no, I'm not an old routine -y, but I've been doing van life for two months now because I had this crazy idea in the end of last year to quit my teaching job and to find a liberation, freedom, nomad lifestyle. But, um, like I said, I'm two months in now and uh, just in case you were wondering, this is my little uh, home on wheels. It's only five meters long, so I've got a very, very small in America, you would call it a micro camper van. And in Europe, it's already a medium sized, I guess, really. But it's very, very small. And I've converted it myself. And just in case you are new to the channel, I will link a, um, well, what do you call that? I will link a link. I will link a link to the van tour that I made of this little van. As customary in the van life community, uh, the van gets a name. The name I gave my van is Dean and I am Jack. So I converted this van with these two left hands, but I thought I did a pretty much good job. It turns out, however, that the professional help that I got didn't always live up to the expectations. So I have solar energy, which I love because it gives me electricity. But since I live in Northern Europe, uh, in Germany and Belgium area, all my friends suggested, hey, it's winter here. Uh, you need a form of heating in your van because you're not going to survive. Now, my big plan, of course, was to go and find the sun in Spain or in Italy or in Portugal. Portugal, but still, you have to drive through a lot of mountains and a lot of cold, snowy conditions before you get to the sun. And um, so I decided to have a diesel heater installed by professionals because um, that is something I really didn't want to even try doing. So, so I have the diesel heater installed. Seemed to be working perfectly fine until I hit the Pyrenees around uh, the Christmas New Year area. And all of a sudden, the diesel heater, when I just needed it the most, didn't quite uh, work. So after checking all the cables and, and doing online researchers and all that, uh, I came to the conclusion, and as people kindly pointed out online, it's your solar panel. There is no sun, you're driving in snow, you're not charging your battery, and if you're not charging your battery, your diesel heater is not going to work. It's actually quite easy, it's quite clear, and I thought, well, just hold on tight, just uh, a couple of more days and you're in sunny Spain, and you don't need the diesel heater. And hey, lo and behold, I am in Valencia in Spain at the moment and I don't need the diesel heater. That's what I would have thought. I don't really need the diesel heater. But in the morning and in the evening, it is still kind of fresh. It, it can vary between 5 degrees to about 12, 13 degrees. But, you know, when you wake up in the morning, the van, I mean, it is an iron box, let's be honest here. It does cool down very quickly. And in the evening, when you're just sitting down and maybe watching a bit of YouTube or a bit of television, and you're just sitting in, in a cold environment of 13, 14 degrees, it's not nice. So I thought, OK, I either need the diesel heater fixed or I need to find an alternative. That's again when YouTube comes into play. It's nice having a community of people trying to help you. And somebody mentioned the buddy heater. Now, and just in case, like me, you don't know what a buddy heater is, I'll try. Uh, I, I'm not very good at this thing. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to try and put a picture there of a buddy heater. So I'm in Spain. I'm sure it's not called El Body Heater. Iron mongers in Spain are called Ferroteria. Ferro means probably iron, and teria is like, that's the place. Like a cafeteria is where you get cafe, paneteria is where you get 
bread. A pasteleria is where you get pastels or like uh, cookies and, you know, uh, pastries. Anything on Iria is the place. So Ferroteria is the place where I went to find the body heater and it was kind of expensive. So in the end, I decided not to buy it over there. And let's be honest, I'm trying to lead a nomad lifestyle or a van lifestyle. Now, we all have probably preconceptions about what it is like. I have discovered that I am not really the nature type where you just stand with your van in the middle of nowhere all on your own. I think I do need the comfort of people, of noises, even when they're bloody annoying. But, you know, I like people although I'm an introvert. But still, I like the presence of people. Let's put it that way. And I've discovered I like my modern comfort. I like my mobile phone. I like having internet. I love, I love heat. So I thought I'd better check whether I could buy a body heater online. And of course, the minute you go on Amazon and look for something, it is a bit like YouTube, isn't it? You watch a video on YouTube and an hour or a day later, your homepage will change all of a sudden and it will adapt and it'll sort of say like, oh, but you were interested in this, then you might be interested in that. So same with Amazon. I was looking at these body heaters and the next day, lo and behold, they sort of said like, oh, but you might like this and you might like that. And then there was an offer, daytime offer of 12 euros, 12 dollars. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to order this and see what arrives, what it is, how it works. For 12 dollars or 12 euros, that's like three coffees in town and I've spent the same money. So um, I ordered it. Before my Amazon parcel arrived, I went into town because I thought, well, I need some socks to just keep my feet warm because I don't know if it's old age, but actually the feet are the ones that get the cold. And I, when once the cold is set in my, my lower limbs, then I'm freezing all over. So I went into town and I couldn't find anything remotely, I'm saying that with a shrieking voice, remotely, well, masculine really. So I, I found these socks and uh, <laughs> to be quite honest, they make my feet boiling hot. I mean, it does work. It just looks silly. Thank God I'm a solo traveler and nobody was, has to watch me wear my pompons. But well, these were the best five euros I spent uh, that week and they, they tied me over nicely and um, I had warm feet throughout the week. But hey, now I've invested even more money. So let's give that a try. <laughs> and I think... Um, although I teased it in the last videos, I think it's time to open the box and see what kind of heat 12 euros buys you nowadays. And while I'm opening this box, can I just mention that I appreciate you actually discovering my channel because I did something, I did a bit of Sherlock Holmes work online when I went incognito. I tried to find my own channel. I, you know, I typed in... Ford Transit Van Tour, which is literally the title of one of my video clips, which I link up here. And I didn't show up. It was so bizarre. You know, like I had pages and pages of Ford Transit Van Tours, which is perfectly fine. And then it started showing me Mercedes Van Tours and Renault Van Tours. And I thought like, well, where is mine? So I'm glad that you actually stumbled across me. And then I tried, like, okay, well, I'll try something else. I'll try, you know, another um, search term. And that was, I think, solo male travel older or so, solo male traveler. And <laughs> that was even weirder because it showed me three men. And then this fourth uh, person was already a solo female traveler. So... I was a bit confused by the the algorithm because they keep on saying you have to chase the algorithm and in the end the algorithm doesn't show me. So well so thank you for showing up on this channel for people that have followed me welcome back and for the newbies I'm really glad you found me. 
how you manage to do it goes beyond me. Okay, let's check this box. Oh, it's one of the cases where there, there's more box. There you go. There's even more. And smaller. It's not very big, is it? Well, it is a heater. There you go. And it is made in China. We know that too, of course. Uh, okay, let's go. let's go. So this is the main heater. Let's have a look here. So there you go. Oh, there's something else here. Oh, okay. Oh, a travel pouch. Oh my God, they are spoiling me for $12. <laughs> I don't think I'll need that. Oh, okay. So, we all have a camping heater in our van, so this would fit on there, and then uh, I assume you'll heat it. Anything else in the box? Oh, okay. Okay, well, we it comes with a handy fork, I assume, because this thing gets hot that you don't want to... Um, oh, I don't know how that works. Okay, okay, there you go. Well, I assume it gets bloody hot and then um, you don't want to touch it and move it. Well, I think we need to demonstrate that in this morning, really, because uh, it's still very cold. Well, cold. It's, it's fresh, let's put it that way. And if this just could take the edge of the freshness, then I'd already be more than happy. Let's put it to the test. Well, if we want to give it a try, we'll have to get our gas cooker out okay then this will fit on here oh wait a minute that looks like it's not gonna fit wait a minute you need to take that off that's for the coffee otherwise uh, the mocha pot doesn't fit on the gas cooker put that to one side and let's try this again but it's got these little things here that would make it fit or a tighter fit. I don't know if you can see that. You see now it can't even wobble. I'm trying to wobble here. No, it can't wobble. That's good. Okay, it doesn't move. Perfect. And for the hard of hearing, there is a warning as well. There you go. Let's see what this little beauty has in store for us and how much heat it is giving. At the moment, it is 13 degrees centigrade in the van. I know that's still not very cold, but when you wake up in your little undies, um, it is a bit nippy. So um, let's try and put this to the test. Here we go. Boom. And as you can see, uh, in the short amount of time that we are running the heater, it's already gone up to 16 degrees centigrade. And since it says that the top is getting hot, I think what we could try is just gonna put the coffee on top of uh, here and see if at the same time as getting a nice and cozy warm interior, I get a nice and cozy warm cup of coffee. Let's put that to the test now. Now I've got a couple of ideas how we can take this heater to the next level and one of them is, now I have to admit I was never good at uh, chemistry, physics, uh, mathematics at school. I was a language dude. Um, but I do know that heat rises and since my feet are cold I think we need to find like a little trick there. And the trick comes into this little piece of plastic here, a small ventilator. That will make the uh, flow of air, of warm air, instead of rising it, it, it will distribute it in the whole van. So I'm going to give that a shot. I'm trying to find ways of boosting this little cheap heater and I thought of something else which I had in my travel pack um, because when you use the 
camper gas stove outside because of the wind sometimes the flame goes out so you have these screens these windshields and um, i'm gonna give that a test as well see if that also will redistribute the heat more towards the area that i want it Well, I think that works. There you go. And let's have a bit of coffee. Well, the, the coffee's hot, that's for sure. Look at it steaming. Ah, great. Now, when you're talking or when you're working with gas, there's always a couple of security issues. So, um, especially the carbon monoxide. So be careful there. I have to advise you, I have to warn you, you have to be careful there. So in a small van like this, we have a problem if there's too much carbon monoxide. Open a window, even if it's only a jar, there will be some fresh air coming in. The second thing I really advise you to have and go and buy is a carbon monoxide detector. They're not really that expensive, at, apart from actually telling you the temperature. It also is your failsafe for carbon monoxide poisoning. So have this in your van as well, runs on batteries and it makes... It will warn you when you're in danger. At the moment, we've gone up from 13 degrees, remember, and we are now at a, a really nice and crispy 19 degrees. So I think we have a winner here. And I know we shouldn't compare these things, but the diesel heater plus installation, which doesn't work, cost me about 2,500 euros, whereas this cost me 12 euros on an Amazon deal. And um, the little ventilator was another four euros and the shield i had that in my pack anyway but that was about nine euros i seem to remember and this was the most expensive thing it was 35 euros plus batteries so all in all my evenings my mornings are great again i love valencia i love being here it's a great city i am near the beach and I think too, you know what? It's time to go and do my morning walk at the beach. So why don't you come with me, show you what a lovely morning on a beach in Valencia looks like. Finish my coffee here and then let's get out there. Mm -hmm. 